Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to do our Should You Buy video on the new and first dedicated refinery ship in the game, and that's the Misk Expanse. Now, I could have done this video a few days ago. Um, I held off really hoping that once the sale was made available to the general population and not just concierge, that we would have gotten a brochure with more details. But for that, I think we'll just need to wait for the Q&A at this point. And since we don't have a date on when we'll get that, I'm expecting it to be this coming Wednesday, but we'll see. I wanted to go ahead and give you the recommendation that I think you're waiting for. I will say that there are questions I have that need to be answered to fully understand the value of this ship, but I do think we have enough in place to be able to make a solid recommendation of where things stand now. The price of the Expanse comes in at $135 if you're doing it war bond, meaning you're paying new money, which also comes with lifetime insurance, or $150 if you're buying with credits included in the purchase. There is a pack that comes along with a prospector for $260 or $290, depending on if you're using credits or not, which is a pretty good pack, um, though how the you know how well the two of the ships are going to work in conjunction uh, solo is in question. Overall, when we say that this is the first real refinery ship in the game, it's more about being a dedicated ship to that purpose. The Starfarer is also a refinery ship, but it's also a hauler and does fuel instead of ore. So this is really the first pure refinery ship focused on mining operations. The ship is 35 meters long, it's 11 meters tall, and 21 meters wide, which makes it roughly freelancer sized. The Expanse is two levels tall. You have an entry ramp that takes you to an elevator and a ladder to get upstairs. And up there you have a cockpit up front with the kind of signature letterbox glass that you're used to seeing on ships like the Freelancer and the Starfarer. Um, behind that on the level is a small living area with some sparse creature comfort such as a bed and locker. And even beyond that you have a small operations area where you can interface with the refining jobs through a station and see through a small window into what's actually happening but that area is expected to be cramped. Overall, I expect the interior of the ship to feel very small compared to the size of the ship, considering so much of that is actually occupied by the actual refinery section that takes up roughly uh, the rear 55% of the ship. The look of the Expanse is unique. It's not ugly, not particularly attractive. It's just a hole that's really easy to identify. Uh, it's kind of a tall ship when looking at the cross section and is almost kind of has the large shoulders of a starfarer while having kind of that empty space between the shoulders and the body to help streamline it. That's where those cargo pods sit. It's cool, kind of chunky, a little ungraceful, but it's also just kind of the misc design language. Um, the Expanse is a single person ship, which is handy from a cost perspective. Um, looking at the defenses of the ship, you have two size one weapons, which basically equate to nothing. So you either need to have security in the form of friends or in the form of choosing wise locations to manage transactions. Because an expanse and a prospector are going to be eaten alive by real fighting ships, and it doesn't even take a big one to do it. And that's not really a problem for the ship. The ship isn't, you know, isn't a combat vessel, and the shielding and armor are TBD, but you can't sustain an attack in this ship, so being smart about things is still important. On the rear of the ship, though, you have a size 1 tractor beam, which is an GN-inspired te inspired technology that's being used for loading and unloading pods, and you know, that's bringing in ore or shipping off cargo. The idea here is that a prospector or a mole would roll up, they would eject their ore pods, those kind of bags that are used, and the Expanse would tractor beam those bags to the rear axis of the ship, secure the grip, extend a suction tube, and pull the materials into the vessel. Now, once those materials are brought into the ship, that's where the refinery comes in. And on the Expanse, that presents itself in the form of six reactors. Those six reactors can either do six refining jobs independently, or they can do one job much faster by focusing their refining on the same job type. Once that ore has been refined, the destination is eight cargo boxes on the exterior of the ship. Each of those hold eight SCU of refined material that you, the Expanse owner, can either go and sell yourself, or they can be offloaded to a cargo ship uh, to go and do the job. The Expanse technically has 64 SCU of cargo, that 8x8 number, but I have serious doubts about this being able to do commodity trading. Instead, being dedicated, meaning that it will be uh, you know, kind of limited to what comes through your ship's refinery. 
They noted that the ore bags used by the prospector are actually UEE standard sizes. So you would think that the mole, which carries more per bag, uh, may be different. But my assumption here is that with the UEE standardization is that the size of the top of the bag that interfaces with the ships is what's actually the uh, consistent part. Essentially on a 3D item, you have width, depth, and height. If the width and depth are the same, the height can vary. It doesn't really matter. So I think what they're saying is that the part that snaps into the locking mechanism of the expanse is standardized, uh, but the height of the bags, thus increasing the volume for ships like the Mole, can vary without problem and probably opens the door for other ships down the line with that type of game balance in mind. Now, when we look at a should you buy on a ship like this, we're essentially reviewing the value proposition of what it has to offer and then comparing that to the return on your investment. Uh, some things that are going for it are that, uh, you know, for time sensitive material like quantanium, uh, you're essentially needing eliminating the need of having a concerning uh, trip back to a station that may be a long ways away from your current location. Now, when we look at where we're at today, with just the Stanton system and the belt fields or moons, uh, it's not really a concern. You know, you can fill a prospector and reliably you know, know that you're going to be able to return without issue, um, assuming you're mining smartly. But in a system that's coming next, like Pyro, or really just anything larger, the time to get to your destination could be crucial. And if that's the case, being able to have a refinery where you're at eliminates the stress and potential crushing blow of the time that you spent finding something to mine, doing the mining and the collecting just to net nothing because you exploded, other than a ship claim, is a pretty good value add. And along those lines, if you're finding a great quantanium field, I mean, there's been countless times where I have had more that I have wanted to mine, but I have to leave because my prospector's full. Um, having that ability to not lose the contents of what's right in front of you would be amazing. Um, you're eliminating the middleman of the station that you have to travel to. And in a game, in a universe where time is money, it's a big value add. So it all may sound really great and rosy, but let's talk about some of the unknowns here. Because I think they're important. First off, can you legitimately use a prospector and the expanse solo? Because there is going to be a ton of people that don't play with others. So they see this pack and think like, this might be a really good way for me to make money. Um, so is there a way where you can do the mining in a prospector, get out into EVA, go pull an expanse from a station, go back to the prospector to eject the pods, collect them in an expanse and do the refining process? That sounds clunky as hell. <laughs> So for the people wanting to do things all solo, I don't think this makes that much sense. Also, can you do refining while your ship is stored at a station? Because depending on the amount of time that it takes to refine materials, that's an important answer. How quickly do these reactors work compared to the refineries on stations? Common sense would say they're slower because they're probably smaller. They don't have the backing of an entire space station or that power. Um, but that doesn't make for good gameplay. So how do they balance that? And then how do you rectify saying that a little ship that cost $135 is going to do things better than a giant space station? We just don't know. We know that the six reactors can work in tandem and likely could use two for three similar job types. So there's different configuration options. But how does that really compare to a station? And we just don't know. Um, do you have the same job types that are on stations? Like, can you have slower jobs with higher output? And does it make sense to have like a high output, slow job for low cost, like a 28 hour refinery job on a ship that is retaining someone else's ore? And from there, you have to ask questions about like, how do funds work? If I'm asking someone to refine a job and it takes 28 hours, how long are they're held, they're, they're, the funds held up? Does that work like the purchase at a refinery or is it more like in escrow, like refueling? Um, what if the other player isn't online to be able to give me the job that he said he would refine for me? And is it all hand wavy up or do I really need to reconnect with that person? I'm assuming also that the expanse owner is the one that's setting the price for the job, like a refueling job. But we also don't really know that. Speaking of which, if there's multiple options on refining speeds and outputs, who controls that decision? Maybe I don't want to wait for a 28 hour job to clear in my ship if I'm the one that's doing the refining for some random in the verse, but the player asking me to do the job wants the higher output and to limit the expense. 
How's that decided? I also question a little bit the logistics of ejecting cargo pods and if the rear tractor beam can grab them to actually help load cargo onto uh, the cargo ships. Or maybe it's just to drop the pod, maneuver the ship, and then you can you know, do it. Or maybe it's a, hey, you know what, I've ejected the pods, it's now on the cargo ship uh, to figure out how to do this. Long story short, we don't have the information we really need on a lot of topics. And it leads to a ton of questions that need to be answered by CIG. Uh, and while it may not be crucial to make a ship buying recommendation, there are things that you need to be aware of that are going to be unknown and could impact how this ship is valuable to you. So at this point, you may be saying, Youngblood, how the hell do we pivot out of that sea of the unknown to know if you should buy this ship? And that's a really good question because I honestly don't know on the answers to a lot of those questions I just brought up. That's why they're my questions. I have opinions, and in general, I have a good feel for what they're going to do, but we can't bank on that. So what I will say is this. At $135 to $150, a ship that could empower an organization to stay out and be operational while eliminating travel time is a huge value add. I don't think at least until more NPC missions come in or until server meshing becomes reality, that this ship is a good solo endeavor for making money. Meaning that if you don't play with others that you know we're actually doing mining, I don't think that the ship makes sense for you unless you just like the gameplay type because you're going to be sitting around waiting a long time to make that money. Um, you know, there's 50 people on a server. How many of them are doing mining and how long is it going to take you to get there and how do you coordinate that? Like, it's just I don't see it right now. Um, I also want to make it very clear that this ship is really only doing refining. So if you're wanting to use this for combat or cargo or exploration or box missions or really anything other than just refining mined goods, there's a ton of way better options. So for the majority of you watching this video, it's probably not the right ship for you. However, for the large mining organizations of the world like UEMC, the larger orgs in general that have people that are playing a diverse you know, type of gameplay, um, the people that play with a small group that know they're going to be doing mining um, just all over the place. Um, these are the groups that I think it makes sense and I think should be kind of like a default recommendation for these people. Uh, it helps to contribute to the overall efficiencies at the organization level. It allows you to multitask leading to the loop that you hope to see for gameplay like this, which is scout, mine, refine, transport, sell, repeat. And that's how you keep things earning and you rake in profits by just having that cycle churning and churning and churning. It's the missing link in a really important earning model, which is defined cooperation. The price was lower than I expected it to be. It should open up efficiencies and it benefits the mining person and the selling party if the market value is respected. Overall, I recommend the expanse and give the should you buy question a yes with the super important caveat that we have a ton that we need to learn about this ship in the upcoming Q&As. So that's the should you buy on the MISC expanse. I hope you found this valuable and helpful. Stay tuned for more information as we get it. And if you have questions or thoughts on the ship, drop them in the comments. Um, I'll ask that you consider to support the channel either through a YouTube membership or on Patreon, which enables some pretty great perks. And there's more information on that available in the links on the video and in the comment section below. Aside from that, I appreciate you all watching. Have yourselves a great day and take care.